Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, everybody. Happy Memorial Day weekend. I appreciate you being here. I uh, want us to start together by singing. This is my favorite thing to do, to, to wake up and start the day. And I'd love to hear your voices. It's the last time we'll sing this this month. Let your love flow. One, two, one, two, three. There's a reason for the sunshine sky And there's a reason for why I'm feeling so high Must be the season Love can't hide and then go stealing the moonlit nights with your lover. Let your love flow like a mountain stream, and let your love grow with the smallest of dreams, and let your love show. And you know what I mean, it's the season. Let your love fly. Welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living. My name is Steve Matthews, and it's my pleasure of being your host today. This center is a spiritual community where all are welcome. Thank you for joining us here in person, online, or wherever you may be. Our center is a spiritual community that teaches the philosophy for daily living on spiritual principles and practices that are universal among religions. We honor all pathways by which people seek to know and connect with the divine. And we work with our individual consciousness so we can help make the world a better place. Our practitioner holding high watch today is Hildreth Ferris. During the meeting, throughout the meeting, she will be in prayer, holding and knowing the best and highest good is unfolding us as we share this space and time together. Our prayer practitioner today is Farrell Zeman. From wherever you are, I invite you to commit yourself to our center's spiritual purpose by saying our purpose statement together. We are a thriving community 
where individually and together we embody and express our spiritual magnificence for the highest good of all. For the latest information on what's happening on our center, visit our website at www.spirituallyfree.org. Today, our guest speaker is Reverend Myrna Hurst, who will speak on the topic, Sadness, Low Tide, or High Tide. And our guest musician is our very own Leslie Monroe. Yeah. Next week, we have the ple pleasure of featuring Chaplain Wes Wilde as our speaker and special music. Um, his topic is called Welcome to the Temple. We'd like to welcome any people who are here for the first time. If you are comfortable in doing so, please raise your hand so that we can acknowledge you. Is there anybody? Hello. Welcome. Thank you for coming today. Um, you can pick up a welcome packet in the lobby that has information on the Science of Mind and also um, a free copy of the Science of Mind magazine after the service. On the first Sunday of each month, which is next week, we hold a Center for Spiritual Living introduction class. Um, it's a great opportunity to learn more about what we practice and have any questions that you may have answered. Our center is founded and is grounded in prayer, which helps us deal with whatever comes our way in a creative and positive way that we can experience regardless of our circumstances. Our professional prayer practitioners are trained in the art and science of affirmative prayer and are ready to pray for you and with you. If you look on our website, you can click on a link on our homepage and send us a prayer request. And then throughout the week, the practitioner, practitioners will be holding your um, hearts and issues uh, with, with them during the week. If you would like to connect with them personally, you can identify the practitioners today by those who are wearing purple stoles over their shoulders. Now I invite you to settle in, allow Farrell's reading and the centering music to take you to that sacred place within. Then Farrell will lead us in prayer. Prayer is essential to happiness. Prayer is essential not to the salvation of the soul, for the soul is never lost, but to the consciousness or the conscious well-being of the soul that does not understand itself. I'm going to read that again. I had a, a moment when I, I was losing consciousness and I fell to the to the floor and I didn't really lose it but the voice came to me and said get up <laughs> you're okay all right <clears throat> prayer is essential not to the salvation of the soul for the soul is never lost but the consciousness of well-being is the soul that does not understand itself there is a vitality in our communion with the infinite, which is productive of the highest good. As fire warms the body, warms the body, the food strengthens us. As sunshine ra raises our spirits, so there is a subtle transfusion of some invisible force in which communion weaving itself into the very warp and wolf of our own mentalities. This consciousness commingling with our thought of spirit is essential to the well-being of every part of us. That's from Science of Mind by Ernest Holmes.
recognizing that that divine energy beats our very heart within each of our bodies. We are one with our source. We are grateful for that. We welcome it. We are grateful for the knowledge that, that we are one with our source. We're very grateful for that. We're grateful that we are one with each other as well because we are each individual manifestations of that oneness. And so knowing that to be so, we are filled with gratitude. Gratitude for our very breath, gratitude for this day, gratitude for each other. And so we embrace that, we let it radiate from us and declare it to be, and so it is. Thank you, Pharaoh. So we're kind of tying a bow today on our, the wonder of our emotions. The song that we'll sing together called Words Are a Gift, and they are. Whether written or spoken, it's a way we can express how we're feeling. And then those words, along with the emotion we're feeling, have much power. And they can make changes in the world. And the fire behind the words we speak and write. Let's sing together. Words are a gift. One, two, three, four. My life is built on the words I speak. I create, I renew, I reveal. Whatever I tend to feel and think, I speak a pathway to it. For singing along. <clears throat> it's always a pleasure. I get to do um, introducing our special music. Uh, Leslie Monroe is such an integral, vital part of this musical ensemble up here. Um, it is just remarkable the spirit and energy and creativity that she puts into writing her music. And it's been such a gift that we in the band, I'll speak for everybody here, <laughs> get to play with her in the music. Um, this is uh, a couple of wonderful songs you'll hear. Let's, let's give a round of applause for our keyboarder, singer, songwriter, and wonder, Leslie Monroe. 
Thank you. My dog thinks so too. <laughs> so as we talk about emotion and uh, sadness, um, I'm led to this song, resurrecting this song from a while back, and it talks about going into nature. Does anyone go into nature mm -hmm. to feel the embrace of Mother Earth, to, to come back into balance, to recharge? That's sort of what this song talks about, especially coming back from duality. Mother Earth is so wonderful to just bring that all into love. And Rick will join me.
It's my privilege to welcome Reverend Myrna Hurst. Um, she has been a student of the science of mind for over 25 years, and she was a founding minister of the Leighton Center for Spiritual Living. She serves as the visioning chair here at the Salt Lake Center for Spiritual Living, and it's my pleasure also to be in um, her foundations class now, and we had finished one just a, a month or two ago. So thank you. Um, let's welcome Reverend Myrna Hurst. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Those of you who are here and those of you who are sitting at home with a cup of coffee in your jammies. What a wonderful way to start a Sunday. Okay, so here we are. Um, you know, it's been an interesting month. We started out talking about fear. And then we did happiness. And then we did anger. And now we're doing sadness. What a lovely month it's been. <laughs> the title today is, is High Tide and Low Tide. I'm, I'm a lover of the beach. Anybody who knows me knows that. I could spend my life sitting on the sand and watch the tide come in and the tide go out and the waves come in and go out and the little crawly things that follow the tide. It's such a beautiful place for me to be. And I know that the reason that the ocean is nice is because it moves in and out. And I know that The, the, the little rivers in, in the Utah mountains are beautiful because they're always moving. Does that make sense? Even the Great Salt Lake, which I think is a beautiful piece of ocean, it's the closest thing we've got. The reason that it's as wonderful as it is is because it moves. There are little waves well, and there, there's the salt, of course, which is a whole different thing. What I'm trying to get to is the only water that's not fun and nice and lovely is water that's stagnant. And so now we get to talk about emotions. Because can you imagine being emotionless? Can you imagine being in a place where every day is exactly the same? And everything that happens in your life just flows over you like it didn't matter. So we're going to talk about sadness today. And I want to start by, before we do that, I want to start by looking at the yin-yang symbol that we looked at the other day when I was here. There we go. Look familiar, doesn't it? You know, we, we, can, we can say about emotions, and I said this before, that they come on a continuum from really, really, really happy to really, really, really miserable. And these we call good, and these we call bad, and we decide which ones are which. So the ones that I think are, we, we want to call bad, that might be in the, in the black part of the thing, are the things we've been talking about for the most part. Fear and anger and sadness and bitterness and meanness and all of those things that we think are bad things. And then, of course, the ones that are on the other side. Happiness, joy, laughter, love. The emotions called love. We call those are good. And yet, together, they make this symbol. And as I pointed out before, if you'll notice that in the happiest of uh, the ones that we like, there is a little bit of black. And in the ones that we don't like, 
there's always a little bit of white. And that's important to know because those emotions themselves don't really matter. It really doesn't, it really isn't. It, consider the fact. If you are very, very sad about something, there's a place in there called love that will bring you back. When you're in a state of absolute joy, could you live there all the time? Wouldn't it get a little boring? Of course it would. Eventually, life would get as bad as a, as a stagnant pool. We don't want life to be stagnant ever. So, we're gonna start. I'm gonna tell a little bit of story and I want you to think about how it feels as I tell you this, okay? A very short little piece. Pay attention to what happens when your body as I read this. In Uvalde, Texas, an 18-year-old gunman opened fire Tuesday at a Texas elementary school killing at least 19 children and two adults as he went from classroom to classroom. In the latest gruesome moment for a country stirred by a string of massacres, and then the assailant was killed by law enforcement. How does that feel? How did that feel when you saw that day? That sadness. Didn't you, did you notice how quickly it morphed? from sadness, maybe to anger, certainly to judgment. And now everybody's out there trying to find somebody to blame. And all of that is emotion. And none of it is good, and none of it is bad. It just is. Got too many pieces of paper on this desk. It's interesting. It's interesting. Edward Fouillon, who is the leader of Centers for Spiritual Living this year, and he's got, he's got this going. He says, there is something to be learned. As we feel this feeling, as we listen to what, we, what I just read, as we think about that gunman and we think about what we believe about that, and then we go on to use that to help us understand ourselves a little bit better. It's about learning. One of the good things that comes out of that, one of the bright spots and the black spot and the black spot and the white part, is that we get to learn something every time. What did I learn about myself when I read that first piece about Uvalda? What I learned is I tend to go to anger pretty easily. And I tend to try to find somebody to blame. Just like many of us are doing right now. And one of the things that I do is that then I start feeling guilty because I'm blaming somebody. And then it's all downhill from there, just what it is for me. So what, what Vuillana is saying about this, about feeling the sadness or whatever it is, it's helpful to stay with whatever emotion arises rather than brushing it aside. Pay attention to it, it says. I ask as if I'm talking to the emotion itself, what is it I may learn from you? I think that's interesting. And because I'm by basic nature a teacher, that's all automatically where I want to go every time I, something gets involved. So what I want to say about that thing in Uvalde is, I want to know more about all of it. I want to know more about every bit of this. There are highs and lows in my life and I need to embrace all of them because there's something in there I can know. And it's all about me. It's all about becoming who I am and knowing what I'm, what's real in my life and what I can call myself and what is really outside of me that somebody else is trying to tell me how to believe. Does that make sense? If somebody else is telling me how I should feel, I may be inclined to go there, especially if it's somebody that I trust. 
Wendell Berry. The cloud is free only to go with the wind. The rain is free only in its falling. The water is free only in its gathering together in the downward course and then lifting again into the air. The law is the rest. If you love the law, and he uses a capital L like we do in our center, if you enter singing into it as a water in its descent, then you become who you are. There is a law that says, I must be authentic to myself. I cannot be otherwise. And so if somebody tells me that I'm supposed to be happy all the time, I'm losing out on a piece of my life. If I'm supposed to be miserable, and I don't feel miserable, I'm losing out. Because I'm not trusting in who I am. That's what we learn from our emotions. Who do I become as I pay attention to that? I want to stay with whatever emotions arise long enough for me to help them to help me to become who I am. So how do I do that? It's a learning thing for me. And learning is something that we teach more than anything else in this center. So suppose something bad happened. Could be the thing there. It could be something that's happened to you. It could be somebody that you've lost or somebody that you've just found. It could be something that makes you incredibly happy. It could be something that makes you incredibly sad. It doesn't matter. Whatever that emotion is, you can use it to learn from. So in, in the science of mind philosophy, we have some tools that help us do that. You know that. Think of something that has happened to you in, I don't know, recently, that might not be good. And recognize that the first thing you can do is to look at it and say, this is not what I want. And what I want is fill in the blank. The first thing you do when you want to do something like that to get beyond something bad, that you think is bad, is to set an intention about what you want instead. Suppose, for example, you had a financial crisis. There are a couple of things you could do about that. One would be to say, oh my God, I'll never get over this. I might just as well, you know, I don't know, jump off a bridge or whatever. Or you can say, I intend this to be different. And what I intend is I intend to have sufficient financial support all the time. Because I know that that's true. That that's what I want and I can have it. Do you understand how our system works? Because once I set that intention, and I set it, set it clearly to the universe, the universe responds. It always does. And that's the law that Wendell Berry is talking about. If I say I want something, and I know that I can have it, and I feel it strongly, then I turn it over to the law, and the law only ever says yes. So whether I say, oh my God, I will never get over this, and I will always be poor, the universe says, okay, that's what you want, sure. Or if you say, I really would like to have this, the universe says, sure, okay, you can have that. So we set an intention. And we use a little bit of what Ernest Holmes called the fire. That fire that gets into your belly when you know something's important to you. When a long, long time ago, when I was studying, beginning to study the science of mind and learning how to do the affirmative prayer that we do, Betty Bogart was one of my first teachers. Wonderful woman. 
And we talked about the five steps of treatment. We talked about recognizing and realizing and all of those, whatever they are. And then she said to us, you can have one word, be a prayer. Doesn't have to have five steps. If you say no, that's a prayer. If you say yes, and you mean it, that's a prayer. We still go through the five steps, but it doesn't have to be that way. We can use anything that we use, as long as we do it with fire, as long as there's a real desire, as long as it becomes real for you. It's going to show up. It always shows up. Henry David Thoreau said, if one advances confidently in the direction of your dreams, and endeavors to live the life which you have imagined, you will meet with success unexpected in common hours. Advance confidently in the direction of your dream and endeavor to live the life that you had imagined. Fake it till you make it. It works. It always works. It works. So we talk about treatment, and we'll talk about treatment in a class one of these days, and we'll, you'll get a chance to, to listen to the details. Maybe it will show them to you a little bit. What really becomes important then is to recognize that we are all one, that I can have what I want, because where is the divine? Out there somewhere, and I have to ask him for it? Him, of course, you know, the, the old guy with the beard who sits up in the mountain and has this little book that he writes in so that he can give you coal for Christmas. You know that guy. Yeah. That's not God. That's Santa Claus and him we made up. So where God really is is right here. And right there and right there and right there and right there. And together in this room, and together, all of you at home with your coffee and your jammies, all of us together, we make up God. Everybody is part of God. And so together, we can have dreams, and we can make those dreams come true, and we can do it with fire. We're doing it right now. If in the last year, or two, or three, since uh, the pandemic and all of the stuff that happened there, this church is re regrowing itself rapidly and beautifully. And we're doing it because we're in here together saying, yeah, this is what we want. And we're going to do it together. And we're doing it together. And it's good all now. So that's what oneness is. And that's what God is, which is because God is love and God is one. And there are lots of words for that. But here's something to think about. God is in everything. There is no place where God is not. I don't know who said that, but I think it's a good phrase. And if God's in everything, then as we use our emotions to figure things out, we've got to remember that we have to include everything that there is as we're figuring this out. So let's go back to the sadness that we felt about the situation in Uvalde. I felt so sad for those kids that will never see another sunshine. I felt so sad for their parents and the people who loved them and all of their other friends in the classroom. Who did I leave out? The shooter. That 18-year-old kid who found himself in a position where he felt that life was so bad that he needed to end his own and end a number of others with him. How, how did that happen? You see, when, when we talk about these things, and the media show tells us about stuff, what happens is we first go to sadness, and then we go to anger, and then we blame guns. But almost never. Do I hear anybody say, what about that kid? 
that 18 year old kid, uh, they did a study, a, a group of academics, and I don't remember who it was now, did a study specifically of people who did, did these shootings and when they're still alive. They collected information about their lives and here's what they learned. Those kids don't want to be shooters when they're born. Kids, are, kids come into this world the way they come into this world. There's a path, a commonality among people who get to the point where they are so desperate that they need to, to, to shoot. It starts, probably for most of them, with a, an unhappy, a hell, unhappy home life a place where they don't get fed the way that they need to get fed so that they can come up with a, a decent self-image. These kids who don't find love in their home and in their lives, and so they go out to find it anywhere else they can. And by the time they're teenagers, they're out on the internet. And just like other people, they become radicalized by what they see on the internet and in the games they play. And once they're radicalized and they know that they are down a path that is, is wrong, but they don't care because they're angry now at life. And they're angry at their parents and they're angry at everything. And when they turn 18, they can buy a gun. Can you feel empathy for those kids? Can you get sad about them? The other side of, of the sadness thing is that we can either use it positively or negatively. Sadness can also leave us in a place of hopefulness. Oh. This has been so sad, but look at what we can do now. I think we see this after this pandemic. Who felt like the pandemic was a bad, sad place? Most of us. And yet, as we come out of it, we can say, oh, that was bad, and I want it to stay out of my mind. Because if I ignore it, it's going to go away. No, it won't. No, it won't. We can't stuff things, because they show up just like they showed up for that 18-year-old kid. We can also look at it in a positive way and say we can make changes based on what we've learned. We can make changes in society, not just don't by selling guns, but we can look at these young people and find ways to help them. We can include them in what we call God. We can include everything in what we call God. It's hard to see it at the time. But as we come out of that pandemic, I can, I can feel an energy of good, positive, loving, caring energy that really wasn't so noticeable before. But there it is. Everything I'm talking about so far today kind of boils down to love, because that's where everything ends. Love is, God is one of the best worlds, words for love. Absolutely best. So, for a few minutes, we're going to do a little loving kindness meditation. Some of you have done this before, some of you haven't. But stick with me for a little bit, if you just take a deep breath. Put down all of the, anything that's in your brain right now. Not just on your lap, but in your mind. And go into a place. And you say to yourself, may I be filled with loving kindness. Breathe that. Breathe it in. Embrace it in your heart. And say to yourself, may I be well.
may I be peaceful and serene. And may I be happy. Feel that. Breathe it. Now open your mind and heart a moment and say, think of someone a little neutral, someone you care about. Take them into your heart and say, may you be filled with loving kindness. May you be well. May you be peaceful and serene. And may you be happy. Feel the joy that comes from sharing love with that person. Now think about someone that you don't even know. Perhaps the clerk in the grocery store. Or somebody that you read about on the news has got something to say. Take them into your heart. And say, May you be filled with loving kindness. May you be well. May you be peaceful and serene. May you be happy. Notice as we include more people, this sense of love grows. Now I challenge you to think of that 18-year-old boy. Take him into your heart and say to him, may you be filled with loving kindness. May you be well. Breathe into this. May you be peaceful and serene. May you be happy. How do you feel now? Challenged? But the more people we can include in that circle of love, we can and we do change the world. And it is good. And so we come to an end. And you know, I always give you homework. Tonight's no different. Actually, this is Edward Fillon, the leader of our organization, who says, consider, having, consider establishing a routine of examining your emotions, asking what message a particular emotion has for you. Explore your thoughts and beliefs by asking yourself, where did this idea originate? Am I living in integrity with my values? Who would I be without this thought or behavior? 
These inquiries may create clarity and space in your consciousness for something new. Just a thought. So homework. Examine your emotions. Don't try to not pay attention to them. Don't try to stuff things. When something arises, pay attention to it. Ask, what can I learn? Claim them as good. Claim them as part of you. All of them. And instead of saying, this is bad and this is the good, think about that yin-yang symbol. It's all good. Black doesn't mean bad. It means black. White doesn't mean good. It just means white. Use these emotions that come upon you to learn. And then if you need to, do a little loving kindness meditation. And above all, Buddha's last statement before he passed into the next world was, make of yourself a light. Make of yourself a light. It's all good. Let's pray together. It's interesting that this morning I was listening to um, Edward Vion's morning thing that he does at 7 o'clock our time. I don't know how many of you would do this, but he does a little thing on Facebook just a couple of minutes every morning. And this morning's was about, he uses a little book called 365 Science of Mind. There's a little quote in there every day. This was listening to, and I, it was an amazing thing because I wrote this talk yesterday, a couple of days ago, and what he prayed about today was exactly what I've been talking about. So let's go inside. Knowing that there are no accidents in this world, that God's in charge, that God that is me, that is you, that is us together, we have the power and the presence to create whatever we want to create in this world and in this moment. And in my life, I choose joy. There's a Bible quote from John 16:24. It says, "Ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full." Knowing that this is so, we move into prayer. Knowing that nothing in our thought about God should produce sadness or depression, rather it should do quite the reverse because our faith in and love of God should give us such confidence and such a sense of security that we should indeed be able to say joy to the world, the Lord has come. We must come to realize that God is not in some far off place, but instead that God is an inward intimate presence closer to us than our breath. God is not nor ever can be separated from us, but too often we separate ourselves from God. I now affirm that there is nothing in me that can doubt this presence nor limit the power of good in my life. There is nothing in me that can separate me from the love of God. And I accept the joy of living in the very midst of it. My divine presence, the divine presence, leads me on the pathway of peace. It directs my thoughts, my words, and my actions into constructive channels of self-expression. It unites me with others in love, in kindness, and in consideration. Today, I accept this action gratefully and realize that it brings into my experience everything necessary for my joy and happiness. I affirm for others that which I accept for myself. And in deep gratitude, I say, 
And so it is. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so the light so I can see you. How nice. This is the time when we get to, oh, now you turn them back on, didn't you? See how you are? Okay. <laughs> now is our time to, to, to joyfully join together in gratitude for this organization that we love, in love of the people that sit in this room together, and then to share our physical wealth as well as our mental and emotional love for each other. Will the ushers please come forth? We share in this way, not because we have to, but out of a sense of love. In some of the organizations I belong to, churches I belong to, they say, if you think that you need to give us this money, put it back in your pocket because we don't want you to have to give us money. We want you to want to give us money. And I want you right now to feel how you're feeling, how you're feeling emotionally. If it's all good, open your wallets and let's share. Okay? <laughs> There's a saying that we'll say. It'll be on the board right now. Hope I can remember it. Say this with me if you would. Divine, Divine love, love as, as me blesses, blesses and, and multiplies all, all that I am, all, all that I have, all, all that I give, and all that I receive. And I let this be. And so it is. Thank you.
And now we're going to hear some more from Leslie Monroe. And uh, this is a tune that she just wrote recently and introduced to the band and invited us to play along. And it's funky fun. Thank you, Rick. Well, he mentioned that this month was about emotions. So I got excited and I knew that I was going to write another, another song for my notes to self compilation. <laughs> And so what, uh, what I'm telling myself through this song is that, yes, we deserve to feel, if we stuff our feelings, they're eventually going to come out in ways that aren't going to be optimal, <laughs> optimally experienced. But also the other side of this, because I've noticed this with myself, is uh, along with stuffing negative emotions, I had refused to feel the positive ones fully. Mm -hmm. And I, I had a mentor that said, Leslie, you need to get juicy. <laughs> you need to feel your joy and your bliss. And I noticed that I hadn't done that. So this is my note to self, and perhaps you can uh, sing along. <laughs> Cause you're riding in reaction mode You suck it up, you push it down You don't want anyone to see you now You hold your breath to hold it in But the teapot's whistling again I bring this in Nothing to do with who you really are But for the human part of you It's just a wonderful, wonderful sermon. I can do that with a theme like sadness. It was, <laughs> it's just great. 
So feel those feelings, everybody. Don't ignore them. Don't stuff them. Ah. It's been a blessed day. Thank you so much for coming. Have a wonderful Memorial Day. Hope you celebrate in some meaningful way. Um, just ignore the rain outside. Um, it's going to be beautiful. Let's stand together and sing our closing song. Together we can change the world. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I believe it's not too late. Together we can change the world. Lay the puzzle pieces out. Find out what it's all about. Together we can change the world.